Good evening, you're listening to Daryl Work, the Mothman, and this is another episode of Mothman Podcast. Also going live on our radio station from Clemens, North Carolina, broadcasting on our server from Los Angeles, California. Tonight I would like to thank all of our European listeners, and also the people from Europe that's uh, furnished a lot of the information and the uh, audio programs that we're going to be playing tonight. So uh, we hope everybody enjoys tonight's episodes. The following encounter happened to me this week. Note, I'm a male in his mid-thirties, and English is not my first language. I remember feeling sick to my stomach, while tears ran down my cheeks into my beard. I was sitting in my car on the side of the highway, at around midnight, in between two major cities in Europe. Maybe less than an hour earlier, I had fought bitterly with my girlfriend, We both got mad at each other. She got passive-aggressive, and I began to yell at her. I couldn't even stand to be with her that evening, so I got my keys, slammed the door, and drove off to my apartment in another city. I had to take a little break during my drive home. The episode with my girlfriend woke emotions that were too great for me to ignore, so I stood there on the highway with my blinking light and no engine turned on. It was silent around me except the occasional truck passing by and the constant clicking of the blinking light. My body was tight and my mind ran through the escapade again and again. I hate when that happens, so I decided to continue driving. I turned the key, but I couldn't turn it all the way. I was surprised to find that I couldn't turn the key all the way to start the engine. I tried again and again, but nothing. The key was stuck in the same position. I was stubborn and kept trying, but to no avail. Thoughts of staying my night on the highway rushed to the forefront of my mind. Why? Because I foolishly forgot to grab my cell phone as I was storming out of the apartment. Now I had no means to contact the emergency service of roadside assistance. Now the clicking of the blinking light was like a constant blow. I shut it off and I realized for the first time just how dark it was around me. Trucks passed me by within the following minutes, but I didn't want to step out of my car and wave one of the drivers over. I had a feeling that I shouldn't trust them. Don't ask me why. I always hate when people freeze in the midst of a situation that requires action, so I took a step out of my car. It was raining a little bit. Obviously, I knew where I was since I regularly drive on that highway back and forth and I knew that two kilometers ahead was a highway exit. I figured I would walk on the side of the highway up to that exit where there's a gas station, and hope that it would still be open, even shortly after midnight. I closed my car, and began walking on the other side of the guardrail away from the road. The road was on my left, and trees illuminated by moonlight were on my right. I confess I was scared, very much so. I had no particular reason to be afraid, but my mind turned to the shadows from the trees and to men hiding there, watching me with intense-looking eyes and hands ready to grab me. After fifteen minutes or so, I began to move up a small hill, and the rain turned into snow. It was snowing for a while there, because the earth and the trees were already covered in white. After yet even more time, I finally saw the exit in the distance. I reached it faster than I thought I would. I had miscalculated how far it was, but that was alright. I was happy to be so close to light, people, and a phone that I could use. Right before the exit, there was a bridge that went over the highway. When I was about to pass under it, I saw a lone person jogging. I stopped and looked up in surprise. I could only make out a silhouette, yet I clearly saw a woman ponytail, small and athletic, crossing the bridge. What woman would want to jog around midnight on a road close to a highway, with a wooded area on both sides of a bridge? Seconds later, she was gone. I looked to see if I could make her out within the darkness, but I couldn't. Still weirded out, I continued walking and passed under the bridge. A couple meters further down the highway, I took the exit, Now, in order to take the exit by foot, 
I had to get over the guardrail because there were thick bushes too close to the side of it that I was on. So basically, I was walking on the road down the exit to the gas station. On the right side of me, behind the bushes, there was a trail. If you decided to walk up that trail, you'd arrive back at the bridge I mentioned. So I was walking down the exit road slowly because it was slippery, but also with a steady pace because I didn't want to get hit by a passing car. And then it happened. Somebody jumped on me from behind and pushed me face first into the ground in the middle of the road. I screamed in sudden terror and tried to turn around, ignoring the pain in my chin and right ear. The person was standing on their feet again. I looked on in shock and surprise. It was a woman in her mid-twenties wearing jogging attire, the same person I saw minutes earlier on the bridge. She streaked with wide eyes and saliva dripping out of her mouth, and she charged me again. Suddenly, I felt a sharp pain in my left eye. The woman scratched over my eyes and pocked her fingers deep into my left eyeball. I stumbled backwards, and when she tried to charge at me again, I threw her against the guardrail with her back first. The sound of the impact alone made me cringe. I broke down in the middle of the road, clutching my left eye. Moments passed, but I wasn't attacked again. I could feel all of the pain welling up in my eye. I looked up, and through tears in both of my eyes, I saw the woman heading up the trail towards the bridge again, fast. Adrenaline shot through my body. The pain felt numb as I rushed down the exit road, falling on my ass several times during the process. I was panicking. I just wanted to escape that place. I reached the gas station finally, basically jumping against the door to throw it open. The guy behind the counter was shocked seeing me. I was bleeding, and my eye was basically swollen shut at that point. To make a long story short, the guy called the police and an ambulance. The officers searched the area, but they never found anybody. I am at home now, in the apartment that I inhabit alone, and still pretty scared. I can't comprehend why some random woman would just attack me, but I know for certain that she went for a run in the middle of the night just to find a victim like me. When I was 11, we, my single mom, nine-year-old sister, and six-year-old brother, moved into a beautiful, older, craftsman-style house. I'd heard it was around 80 years old back then in 1984. Soon after we moved in, we found out it was infested with cockroaches. I've never seen anything like it. You'd turn on the lights at night, and they'd scatter from every surface. We had to store all our food that wasn't canned in the fridge, so they wouldn't be able to get into it. We tried bug bombs and professional exterminators numerous times, but with no effect. Those things really can survive a nuclear war. Anyway, they weren't the reason we lived in the house less than a year before fleeing for our lives. I remember my mom discussing our next door neighbor's creepy son with my grandma. He was in his 20s or 30s. She'd been doing dishes one day and looked up to see him standing directly on the other side of the kitchen window, staring in at her. Normally, she would have kept something scary like this from us kids, but about that time, she told us to tell her if we ever saw him near the house and that we weren't allowed to play outside. She also told us about a couple of times when she woke up to see him standing over her bed, and one time he put a cloth with chemicals over her face to try and knock her out. And this is the part of the story I know the least about, since she didn't tell us about it until years later. I think she might have thought she was dreaming, especially if he had been drugging her. I don't know if anything else ever happened. I never asked her about it in case something did and it brought up bad memories. So one afternoon, we were all doing some spring cleaning when my brother said he found a cigarette butt in the upstairs toilet. Weird, since nobody in our family smokes. And being a dumb little six-year-old, he flushed it before telling our mom. And I still remember her trying to get the entire story out of him, being upset that the evidence was gone and thinking he might have maybe been mistaken or maybe he'd picked up a butt somewhere outside out of curiosity. She soon dropped it, and we tried to mostly forget about it. I think it was a few weeks later. My brother was spending the night at our grandparents, 
and my sister and I were the only ones upstairs. Our mom's bedroom was downstairs. My sister heard a sound like a screen door slamming, but insisted it came from in the house, and she was freaked out. I told her it was just from outside and to go to sleep, but about a minute later, we heard a strangled cough coming from just outside our bedroom door. A man's cough, and it sounded like he was trying hard to keep from making noise. I whispered that we needed to get downstairs. We sneaked out of the room, and I had the irrational urge to turn on the light in the bathroom, which was just across the hall from our bedroom, to check to see if anyone was there. And then I felt just as strong of a feeling to get away from the bathroom and get downstairs now. And the scariest moment of my life was when we were creeping down the stairs in the pitch black. It was a spiral enclosed stairway with walls, the perfect place for somebody to hide. The stairway light was burned out, and the wood steps were creaky, so it was terrifying making our way down. And we got downstairs and woke up our mom, panicked that there was a guy upstairs in our bathroom. She started to tell us to go back to bed, but she could see that we were seriously scared. She went over to the bottom of the stairway to go up and show us there was nothing to be scared about, but then she had just as strong of a feeling to close the stairway door and lock it now. She did, called the cops, but they never found anything and didn't take it very seriously. The next day, she called a PD detective friend of hers from high school to come over and inspect the house. Remembering the cigarette butt in the toilet, she had him look at the upstairs bathroom window. It was a high, narrow, rectangular window. Not very big, but just wide enough for a person. Who knows how many times the intruder climbed up our roof to get in and was upstairs while we were sleeping across the hall. The window swung up on hinges. When my mom's friend let the window drop, it sounded just like a screen door slamming. He said the locks on all the windows were so old they were practically useless, and we needed to get out of the house immediately. We moved into my grandparents that day. When my mom went with her brothers a few days later to pack up some things, a back door had been smashed open, but nothing in the house was disturbed or stolen. A few years later, we heard the neighbor's son was arrested for rape and attempted murder. I wonder what might have happened if I had turned on the bathroom light that night, if my mom didn't lock the stairway door, or if we didn't leave the house when we did. I'd like to thank my friend Dale Sanders for reading for us tonight. These two stories came to us from Europe, Germany to be exact. Again, thank you for your input and for your stories, and have a good evening. I'm Daryl Rourke, the Mothman. <laughs>